Hi, this is Adam Kunzmiller with BGG TV at Gen Con 2015, and I'm joined by Uwe Eichert with <coughs> Academy Games, and we're here to talk about Mare Nostra. What, what, what did <coughs> Academy Games mean? I've been coughing all, that, that was a cover to, to look at what the, the name was again. Oh, oh my god, okay, okay, at least there wasn't any type of subvertive yeah, kind of no, thing. Okay. I'm not throwing shade better. on Academy. Okay, okay. You know, all those, all the rumors <laughs> and all the dark secrets going about the internet about Academy Games, they're all false. I swear they're false. Definitely. I, I concur. I can collaborate that. I collaborate. So, uh, so what's, what do we have here? We have Mari Nostrum Empires, which is just ended on Kickstarter two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We are going for $15,000, hit somewhere around 679000 which was a pleasant surprise. I would but imagine. This time we were prepared because we did really well with Fief. Right. And we unlocked over 40 stretch goals. And wow. these aren't just little stretch goals like, oh, here's an extra card, an extra right. hero. These are like full expansions, whole sets of extra meeple men and things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're very excited. And so we will be coming out with Mari Nostrum's Empires, be shipping it in November. Okay, for those that are familiar with the original game, what are some of the, the changes that came and the stretch goals that uh, Quite are now available to them? Uh, Mario Nostrum was such a popular game in the late 90s, early 2000s, but it was mostly you won through military actions mm -hmm. or through building the Great Pyramids. So you know Academy <clears throat> Games and the Synchron Games, we, we love taking old games and really modernizing them and streamlining and making them better. So in this game now, this newest game, Mario Nostrum Empires, we totally reworked it, and now we added commerce and trade to the game. We added politics and religion. So the game now is so multifaceted. So you can win now in several different ways, which you couldn't in the old game. And for those that aren't familiar, what are the players doing in this game? In this game, in Mario Nostrum, you are the head you lead an ancient empire. And in this empire, you're going to build, be building up caravans spreading across known lands to get resources. And these resources, you will be trading them with the other players because in order to build new markets, new temples, new cities, you have to have sets of different resources. They have to be different kinds. So if I'm in Egypt and I have papyrus and gold and things like that, I do not have the iron ores that right. the northern Germanic and Italian tribes and have. And you can't be successful by just kind of turtling in the corner and... Exactly. Right. So you're trading and negotiating with people. After the trade, then you're building. And you're trying to expand. And you build influence in adjacent territories. And when you build the influence, then you can build the markets, building cities, the temples, which give you then more gold income. Mm -hmm. And then you can also hire and build and recruit new um, leaders, I'm sorry, heroes, heroes, and wonders. And these heroes and wonders give you special abilities in the game that then, if you're trying to go down the route of trade and commerce, you may then try to get the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which allow you then to keep more resources from turn to turn. Sure. Or with Cleopatra, getting her and some of her heroes, which allow you with their great grain silos to keep grains and help you with the expansion in different ways. So it's a wonderful game. Because we did so well in Kickstarter, I mean, it's the highest, they tell me, the highest grossing Kickstarter game that's not a miniatures zombie type right. of game. <laughs> so to have a historical based civilization building game do so well, I'm sure we were, it was a pleasant surprise. Uh, yes, and after <clears throat> FIFA, which did incredibly well, we did with the add-ons like 700,000, mm -hmm. we said just in case, let's make sure we have everything prepared for this. So we have true add-ons that the Syracuse add-on, if you go that way, it brings new heroes and new objectives, which the old game never had. And when you make and fulfill different objectives, then you get different trade abilities, trade powers. So you can make the game even more trade-oriented. Or if we go with the Jerusalem, we all of a sudden bring religious gods in, and all of a sudden the game becomes more religious, culturally oriented. Or if we go with Troy, it becomes more military. So all of a sudden we have objectives and a whole new aspect to the game, no more complication, but 
you can then streamline and even mix them up. So they're kind of modular. You, you exactly. Know, if, you, if you got all weekend, you just throw them all in. See no, no, happens. no. The game never. The game it doesn't get longer. Totally for... streamlined. Cool. The old game could last three, four hours. This game, hour and a half to two hours. Oh, in the wow. old game, if you want to go into new province, you had to go through all kinds of machinations. Now, in the same round, you can build a trireme, then across that sea, get influence and control of, let's say, Crete, and then build a caravan or a market in it, mm -hmm. all in the same action. So we've really streamlined it, made it modern, fun, fast, but that tension and player interaction that people know of our games. Great, and how many players does this support? The base game is three to five players, but we're still taking mm -hmm. pre-orders on Crowdox. So you can still get everything, the game, all 40 stretch goal expansions, everything for $70. Wow. Later on, we will have it's a separate full box like that with expansions, very limited distribution of that, and you'll be able to get those for $50 additional if you're only getting the game Just now. Just the base game, right. right. And I want to tell people, if you have a game store you like to support, go to your game store, you can get the same deal for the $70 with all stretch golds. If it's a brick and mortar, we will not work with like a Cool Stuff Inc. where they totally... For that deal, right? For that yeah. deal. They will not get it. That's we are only cool. working with true brick and mortars, and we will give them so that they can give their customers, because we're trying to support the stores and really bring the Kickstarter, which helps us so much, right. and, and helps us really keep our company alive and growing and hiring more good people, at the same time not taking away from the stores. So we're trying to build up the brick and mortars, and the people don't super discount, right. and they need this with the Kickstarters that helps us so much. That's great. Is that something you've been doing with some of your other lines as well? Is it's that something a... we've been experimenting and we're getting more and more refined at because cool. it, it, it's a tough market. I mean, and we're giving, there's so many good deals to be had online, but something with 40 stretch goals, this is a whole board expansion, right. which we don't show. Are they showing the, can they show the map at all? Yeah, I think, I think so. All right. we got the, over. the map is beautiful. Oh, thank you. This is just a part of it. Okay. On the side, we still have the leaderboard, tracking board, which the original game didn't have. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we have the um, Heroes and Wonders board. Mm -hmm. So there are two huge boards that go on top of this. If you now play a four-player game, you just take the Heroes board, place it over the map, and everything that's still the... showing right. keeps on playing. So you don't have this disparity between playing a two, three, four, five, or six-player game. Mm -hmm. It's always the same tension, always the same resource allocation. The, the raw resources, which are hard to get of certain items, and then the same tension gameplay. So for the many people who've already kind of bought into this and are excited, yes. when will they have it in their hands? We are sending out the survey next Tuesday. We want to wait after we were on Board Game Geek here. Oh, so thanks well, thank for you. having us. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I was late for my meeting again, I'm told. And they were so nice. And they put two-minute limit as, I hope it was a joke. So <laughs> It was a joke. It was a joke. But and if, if they miss the Kickstarter, when can they get it? They, same time. Same if they time. miss the Kickstarter, they still can go on Crowdox, go to Kickstarter page, click on it, go on Crowdox, or go to your local brick and mortar store and tell them you want to get this with all the Kickstarter stretch goals, have them call us, we'll set it up, you can pick it up at the same time from your brick and mortar store as the Kickstarter people are getting it. Well, great. Thank you very much, Eva, for I appreciate uh, it. Or describing Mara Nostrum Empires. And I appreciate it, and uh, I just don't appreciate you putting out all the dirty secrets on Academy <laughs> Games at the beginning. Well, I tell you, you are always, I know. <laughs> you are always, oh, you are always live. <laughs> Thanks, Great, Kevin. thanks.